A storm chasing team was caught in the middle of a tornado, the same twister that killed three other storm chasers. And this whole ordeal was caught on camera. And everybody duck down. That is nerve-wracking video to watch. That's what happened to Weather Channel meteorologist Mike Bettis. He was near El Reno, Oklahoma on Friday when the tornado turned suddenly and headed directly toward his crew. He says they sped away, but that tornado quickly caught up. The SUV carrying Bettis and two crew members was lifted 30 feet into the air and tossed 200 yards into a field. Bettis talked about his experience this morning on the Today Show, and here's what he said when Al Roker asked if he'll keep chasing storms. I don't know. Um, it, you know, it's, it's given me perspective, you know, what's important in my life. It, it may not be up to me, Al. You know, I'll talk to my family about it. If they don't want me to go, I won't go. Um, mm -hmm. Simple as that. You know, I have to, I have to keep them in mind. So it was, um, it was an eye-opener. It truly was. As Marley mentioned, three of the victims of Friday's tornado in Oklahoma were veteran storm chasers. Tim Samaras, his son Paul, and their colleague Carl Young died in the storm. Samaras had appeared on the Discovery Channel Storm Chasers show until last year and also contributed to the National Geographic Society. As storm chasing increases in popularity, is it just getting to be too much? Joining me for some insight on this is NBC's Tom Costello. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. My, my pleasure. And you know, you're making the exact point that we're looking at on Nightly News tonight. And that is, you've got the professionals out there like Mike Bettis and like Tim Samaras. But then you've got literally tornado tourists out there. And there are businesses online you can pay to jump into an SUV or a 4x4 and go chasing after tornadoes in the Kansas or the Oklahoma Plains or, or you name the state. And the concern that some police agencies have, have stated, especially in Oklahoma, is that there were so many of these storm chasers out in the small roads of rural Oklahoma on Friday that they were creating bottlenecks and clogging up these small roads, making it difficult for people to get through, to escape, maybe for emergency vehicles to get through. Now, there were literally dozens, dozens plural, of storm chasers out there, some professional and others that were just amateurs looking for great video or a thrill ride. And the concern today is that, as you saw, um, these tornadoes are deadly. If we needed another reminder, we got it on Friday. That's amazing. You know, we saw, of course, on Friday, of course, the deaths. Mike Bett is saying lifted their vehicle 30 feet up into the air. What is the benefit of being out there and being a storm chaser? So if you're a professional, and I asked this question today, I said, is there really any good science that you can get out of being out on the ground? Well, the, apparently the consensus from the meteorological community is absolutely. They have mobile Doppler radar. They have very high-tech equipment out there. They can give uh, an eyes and ears on the ground perspective to TV and radio audience, audiences and, and warning people, get out of the way. This is coming down this particular county road or what have you. But, of course, we live in the YouTube era, and people who are looking for instant celebrity or instant cash may be trying to find really compelling video that they can take of a storm and then try to sell it or become an instant hero on YouTube. So you have these two, uh, the, the clash, if you will, of these, two different, uh, of these two different directions, and, you know, this has just grown and grown and grown uh, ever since almost every one of us now carries a video camera on our hip in the form of a, of a camera. We can all take video. And many, many, many people are now out for the ride. Right. And authorities, of course, in the way, as you say, maybe rescue crews or people trying to get to safety. So they may not want all those people in the way. So the concern here is whether maybe it's time for to give the Oklahoma and the Kansas and the Texas and you name the state, give the police there the authority to declare um, something that you certainly are familiar with up in your neck of the woods, and that is when you have a snow emergency and the police say, we are clearing this road and you cannot park on this road, you cannot be on this road because we've got to clear it of snow. Is it time to give the authorities in the Tornado Alley states that kind of authority where they can do that in a, in a blink of an eye, announce it on the radio, and clear out county roads if they have to because they're trying to create evacuation routes. The trouble is a tornado can come on like that. That's a big difference from a, a snowstorm.
It is indeed. We'll have to see what comes of that. Tom Costello, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. My pleasure. And you can hear you Tom's bet. report on safety concerns for storm chasers. Plus, the death toll in Oklahoma has risen and people are still missing. That's all coming up on NBC Nightly News at 630 right here on Wood TV 8. Plus, still ahead, 24 News 8 Steve Kelso went to the National Weather Service and spoke with storm teammates on Laura Velasquez about the dangers of storm chasing. Are amateurs making it more dangerous for professionals? And how valuable is the data they collect on tornadoes? Steve has those answers and some more perspective coming up at about 555.